It's fixed. <laughs> it's fixed now. So, to recap, okay, who we are, why we're here, all that good stuff. Um, I'm Hero of None. I'm a streamer on of ESO and other such things. I typically are on, I'm typically on late night to, at 9, a, 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, with a little cat face rig most time. Uh, I have in channel with me here Crazy Mad Sai and Mike Finnegan. Uh, we're here doing a interview regarding dungeons. Mike Finnegan is the dungeon lead for ESO Online's uh, dungeons and trials and all that other good stuff. Uh, crazy or crass? Uh, my my name is uh, Crass Mad Sai, the Crazy Mad Scientist. Um, I've been streaming the Elder Scrolls Online on Twitch for over a year and a half now. Um, I also host the Trials Guide Tamriel Strategy website, um, host and lead a Theory Army, which is the guild on PC, uh, PS4, and Xbox One, and just a lover of the game. And uh, I'm Mike Finnegan, Dungeon Lead for Elder Scrolls Online, Zenimax Online, and uh, I go by Zoss Finn on the forums and usually on Twitch if you see any streams. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, we have a couple questions that have already been pre-vetted and such. Um, uh, we've set this over as full disclosure. Uh, they've already heard some of these uh, because we had a slight technical issue when we first started this. Um, we will go through them. Uh, how about we v visit some of the first ones here a little bit later after we get through some of the ones that we haven't covered yet. Okay. Uh, and as we do this, I'll also be doing Maelstrom Marina, which is a, another dungeon that you've designed as well, just to keep people entertained and watching something while we talk is like they'll talk you guys from only the neck up i guess all right so uh question number four kraz i'll leave to you um how do you feel about dps gates in general in in fights for trials and dungeons maelstrom is definitely you started to feel that towards like the last boss of of uh, maelstrom how do how do those work what do you feel about those when you say dps gates do you mean uh Fights that require a certain DPS uh, within a certain period of time, and then it has a harden range. Uh, so, I'm not a fan of hard arbitrary rages, and in, in that, like after X minutes, the boss turns red, and then he just kills you. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of that, but there, there. That being said, I I think that using mechanics to escalate the fight and get to a certain point. Uh, where it's going to be too difficult for you to do, as long as that escalation is is done pretty well, I, I'm, I am in favor of a good example of that is the Jasa in Maul of Lorcage, where he progressively summons less and less pillars, and then once you get down to no pillars, you realize, oh no, if he does this giant explosion again, we're all gonna die. So I think that that's a, a good way to to telegraph that. Um, that, that, that the fight is progressing and you only have a limited amount of time to do it. But mm. I'm not a huge fan of just, oh, after eight minutes, he's red, you die. Mm. So. Yeah, and the other examples you probably give would be like um, Imperial City Prison, when you have the Atros that will at enrage after a certain amount of time and you, <laughs> you, you're you going to die if you don't, you don't get them yeah. down, which is quite evident on like the Flesh Sculptor. And right. then, uh, what was the other one there? What's fun? Uh, blood spawn, it's middle clutch. There's another one that has uh, his 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 again progresses in in that you know the 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 cave ins start to get close more and more and you start to get uh, just more, yeah. more less space that actually to work with. So yeah, yeah. And Vulcan Scoria too. That'd be yeah. the last one. Yeah, we get less islands to go to, which are all really cool mechanics. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Um. Are you, uh, since Hero is working on something, are you currently having any plans to educate and grow through animations um, for interactions like with monsters to show signs of larger mechanics in certain fights um, for bosses, especially for the console community so they know when th certain things are going to happen? So when you say that, are, when, do you mean that uh, as far as uh, buffs and debuffs and health percentages and stuff like that, or do you mean... Not as much that. I mean, in some situations, such as Stage 5, for example, uh, in the Maelstrom Arena, you have the matriarch start talking to you in her garbled, giantess voice. When you see the indication for that 75%, that 45%, when you lose those platforms, you don't need the percentages, but you at least have an indication when those situations are happening well i can say that we do plan on uh putting percentages for health onto console that is something that we're looking at doing that for 
the uh, nameplate or for the yeah for the monster nameplate, so you will be able to see a percentage of health. As far as uh, we don't we don't usually we don't make we test when we test this stuff we test it with the console in mind. So we have console testers that run through all this content on console to make sure that everything is selling that we need it to sell. Um, and we don't have plans to make any unique graphics or anything for the console, but we do take a look at some of the stuff, even even add-ons and stuff like that that players will have for uh, um, PC, and we'll take a look at what we can uh, add to the console to make that that experience better. And I know that uh, basically health percentages is on the is on the game plan. Mm -hmm. Cool. That is going to help a lot. I mean, I play on console as well. And, you know, especially for vet dungeons to try to get those golden keys, you kind of need to know when you're approaching that point. And that's a really cool thing that you say, it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, kind of back to the questions on DPS gates. Um, we have several fights that require, like, really high DPS requirements right now. Um, mm -hmm. Things like IC Prison, uh, Valken Scoria, etc. Um, are we okay with those right now as they are set up, or are there plans to change that in the future as well? Like, to look, to either minimize the, um, effects from low DPS builds, or, you know, people that have to have, like, you know, certain types of builds there? Um, so, we try, we try to take a look and make this, uh, especially with Bed Dungeon and stuff, to try to make this as, as, as pretty much an even experience for as many players as possible. Um, when we talk about uh, bosses in particular that have higher DPS requirements and bosses, we're much more uh, inclined to be okay with. So like Valken's Quarry being the end of that, that City of Ash, that's, that's usually an okay as long as that fight escalates and stuff like that. Whereas if you look at Flesh Sculptor, if the mechanics and everything make that a more difficult fight in a dungeon, and we can tell that by taking a look and saying, oh look, if you get past this boss, you're able to clear the rest of the dungeon, whereas if most people they can't, <clears throat> they won't be able to clear it. So we can take a look at that and adjust that. Um, so we are taking a look at actively taking a look at that and uh, and taking a look at what, what kind of adjustments we can do to kind of smooth out and alleviate any frustration that players have with that. Um, hope that answered your question. <laughs> In particular with Vet COA, uh, ICP, and Vet White, White Gold Tower, uh, those three dungeons are a bit more dangerous for people. Um, than the other veteran dungeons, so we're, we're going to be looking at taking a look at those and not okay. probably out that process a lot. All right. The, the, the other reason I, I feel is like, like it seems like we've had a few dungeons here since launch, right? It used to be like, for example, Vet Crypto Hearts and um, Veteran City of Ash, for example. It used to be the hardest dungeons. Then as we saw new dungeons come in with ICP, like, those are now the hardest ones there, but the other ones, I don't know if it's, like, just us, but it seems like they've, not just we've gotten better, but some of the mechanics have changed, so they're a lot easier to get through sometimes. So. I don't think we've actually gone back and taken a look at those really yet, and part of it is is uh, removing soft caps and changes to the champion point system and people getting more champion points and stuff like that. That's um, true, yeah. Which would probably make those easier. But that being said, we definitely do want to take a look at, at some of those veteran experiences, so that you don't have a. What we want to get rid of, or we want to um, get rid of. We want, what we want to do is alleviate any times where people would get like a veteran pledge or something like that, and say, "Oh, well, it's this. I'm just going to drop that, and I don't want to do that." Uh, yeah. So we want we want to make those. You know, that's that's a grouping mechanic and a grouping mechanism that we want to bring people together with, rather than fragment. Um, all right, so the other one here, um, I'll let you cover this, Chris. This, this is more of yours for the... Uh... Okay, so this one is very similar to the one I just asked. <laughs> um, I, I think I kind of grouped it a little bit, but maybe we can get a little bit more of an elaboration. For PvE specifically play for the console community, um, players are exceedingly struggling with different bosses, mechanics executables, um, time constraints, like what we're talking about, the DPS gates. Um, are there any steps to utilize and go back or add new mechanics and features to help that get closer? And do you work with, um, like, for example, Impale, I know, will have that yellow box that goes around it when you get to that 25% marker. Are there any ways to help players or know when they're getting close to these types of situations? Um, 
we think that, uh, I, I mentioned it earlier, and we're looking at health percentage targets. So that should help uh, alleviate a little bit. We also have been, especially in uh, some of the later fights we've been doing, we've been utilizing the act active uh, combat text uh, quite a bit to mm -hmm. let you know, like if you remember in Law of Lorcage, when you get hit by one of the savages, it'll say your armor is shattered and stuff like that. That's the try, and we, we, we're trying to take a look at using the tools we have in order to get that information to people to say, hey, you're being affected by this. You're going to get these things. Also, death recap, which is kind of after the fact, but we've also been trying to implement a lot more death recap tips to let you guys know. Oh, hey, in this fight, they're very. Sometimes they're, you know, hey, you should group up if you have a death monster. But sometimes it's uh, they're they're very specific to the fights that you're going to have. Um, that we try and give you guys hints. Uh, very cool. I really enjoy those when they give the recaps to the strengths and weaknesses of the monster that you're fighting. Yeah. And those are always really great. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, have you ever, that. Have you ever considered giving something where, um, like, maybe the health bars would be so showing something? Like, you, you give good information, for example, when you have, like, a um, like a major penetration buff or debuff on them with the... Uh, a little puncher. crack health bar. Yeah. Health bar, yeah. Yeah, if, if if you had an indication there on the on the bars there to show, oh, this guy's in execute range for because he's like below twenty five percent, you wouldn't even need the percentages. You just see, oh, this one here is flashing, meaning that now now's the time to execute type of thing. I think I think where that gets into is is uh, we can only do so much with the health bar, um, okay. and uh, and I don't know because this this would really be more of a question for UI and, and how they would want to handle that. Yeah. But yeah. I think that gets into the thing is. Uh, we have several effects that go onto the health bar. The shattered armor, where you, your your health bar looks cracked. We have uh, basically buffs that happen to your heart. Your health bar will start to glow and stuff like that. And the more effects that we would throw onto that, the more those would overlap, and that would be causing an issue. It's like, oh, he's in execute range, but then he also has a buff, and then you know what I mean. So what's that going to look like? And so uh, health percentages would probably be the easiest way that we could do that. So if we if we take a look at particularly with execute range and stuff like that or something. That's going to be the easiest uh, solution for that. Um, but that, other suggestions like that should definitely go to UI, and they'll definitely think we could any, any way that we could uh, help with that. Well, at least for me, I mean, I think, and and to reiterate on that, a lot of the that question revolves around original trials or dungeons, and I feel like new like Maelstrom Arena is very good about indicating when you're yeah. poisoned with a volatile poison, all that stuff. And I think that they're taking you guys are taking some really great steps to to show that. Um, I was more asking, you know, those questions specifically like AA, oh, we're to the boss and the wise mage, let's all stack. You don't really know until it's too late and someone doesn't roll in in time. Right. So on PC it's a little bit easier because we have those add-ons to assist us, but on console it's a little bit more difficult. So, But as a turnaround console, PvE players that get that stuff done are pretty darn good. Yep, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Go ahead, Hero. Um, can you share the new vitality bonus and how the player scores will be uh, trying to calculate into that? Yeah. Uh, so previously, if, if you remember, we had Soul Reservoir in Trials and uh, and actually Arenas as well. And what Soul Reservoir does, Soul Reservoir was a very limiting factor. Uh, if you started to run a trial and you only had 70 some odd lives or something like that, once once you got through essentially five full group wipes or whatever, uh, it would be done. That would be it, and everybody would have to start all over again. Um, and while this did foster the, the, the gameplay of, of really striving to do it and, and stuff, it also limited the amount of player engagement we got. Some people would just be completely turned off by looking at Soul Reservoir like, I have yeah. to do this for so long. So uh, what we were looking at was uh, previously in Iteration Soul Reservoir, we said, okay, let's, 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 make, let's give you a bunch of lives and take it off of the points cost. So then we heard from the other the other side of that spectrum. And players like, no, 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 I liked it when deaths matter. So we we took a look and we basically went back to the drawing board and said, okay, well let's let's take lives and re reduce the impact that it would have on a trial, but also make them worth points. So now you have a starting set of, of lives that you can have, and then as you deplete, or, or at the end of a trial, it's worth a thousand points for every life you have remaining. Um, and this goes for all trials and all arenas. So you're no longer going to be limited by your soul reservoir and that many deaths. But if you're going for a leaderboard time, which is where deaths, people wanted deaths to matter, you're going to want to get as few deaths as possible. Yep. So uh, we thought it was a pretty good compromise and allowed players to, to the players that wanted to, to just, you know, um, 
really work and progress through bosses and stuff like that are really, really tough encounters, they're not going to have this limiting factor. They can still do that, and they don't have to worry about just getting kicked out. What what I what would be an ideal you predict leaderboard score for the new trial you expect that we're going to start producing when Thieves Go goes oh, live? Holy cow! I, I'm not even sure I've run the number. <laughs> so trials are trials are a little bit different than uh, arena is really easy for us to predict because you get points based on each arena. Whereas in trials, um, it's a little bit different because each monster is worth a particular uh, set of points rather than just encounters and stuff like that. So uh, I'd have to get back to you on, on, on the uh, ideal points. Uh, I know that the target time, I think, is 40 or 45 minutes. So uh, it's considerably longer than most of the other stuff. Uh, so it, yeah, uh, I'd have to take a look at uh, No at worries. I was just curious. I'm a number cruncher. No worries. <laughs> Um, so when you design a new dungeon or a new trial, um, especially with the, with the new one, there are so many moving parts that are happening. How do you think of designing it to show players, be like, oh my goodness, this is occurring, I should be kind of doing this, or is it more supposed to be a trial of trial and error, or do, or do you instigate some type of education like you were saying with the text on the bottom? Um, it really depends on the mechanic. So the, the question that we ask ourselves probably a thousand times during the process of making a boss fight and mechanic is, uh, and actually particularly I ask it a lot, uh, is how is this message to the player? How does the player know what's going on? When they die or when they get hit by something, how do they know what's going on? And it's a question we just have to constantly ask. Um, so th that's where it starts. And then from, from that question, it's just it's a really simple question, but from that question, it's like whenever we fight through and we say, how does the player know what's going on? It's like, oh. And then we, we go about solving that question. It's like, okay, what if I put this in this blink? So there's an action text here. Or there's this here. There's... And that's where all of those extra bits get added in. Because as designers, we know what's supposed to happen. So a lot of times we'll go into it and we'll be fighting it. And we'll be like, this played really, really good. And then we throw people in that, that, that haven't seen it before. And they're like, I died. And I don't know why I died. And we're like, oh, well, I guess we should probably message that. <laughs> so, yeah. I was about to ask how many times you bring in new people to look at it from... At you least know, several times. I mean, our, our, our QA group is is in there for weeks. At, for a trial in particular, they're in there for weeks at a time. It's 12 people in there for weeks, hours a day, weeks at a time to, to, to go through this stuff. And, and we bring in several different groups. We'll bring in groups and because it's really good to get people that once they've discerned everything and they know how to do it, that they will uh, they can chew through it and do the progression type stuff. And then there's people that have never never done this stuff before and then say okay and then we also uh, basically we'll take them at different gear levels and stuff like that and give different uh, uh, um, configurations of the group I mean we've even done stuff like hey let's see what it looks like with 12 pet sorts or you know let's see what it looks like with like eight dragon knights dropping standards and see how that works and stuff like that so we, we try to go through as many of those iterations as we possibly can but yeah it's mainly is um, and then after that they test, we go through and we ask them, we sit down with all the testers and we say, okay, tell me what you're in. And it's just like a Q and A session where they can fire off. They're like, well, I didn't understand this and I don't understand that. And we write down pages and pages of notes and then go back to, the, uh, to, the, to our desks and try to hammer it out and figure out this stuff, uh, message correct. So it starts with one question, <laughs> weeks for the work. <laughs> Um, one thing I noticed as well is like most of the stuff seems to be a little bit more like where did I hear, first hear this from? It's a little bit more like um, like Mega Man. Like you, you, when you fight Mega Man, and, and <laughs> like every fight that you're fl fighting in, like the inside the mission, inside like the little area that you have, it's like everything is like telling you what the final boss is going to do. And as you're going through, like um, uh, what is it? Uh, like the City of Ash, for example, you're going through the City of Ash, and every time that you're fighting like the archers or something like that, you're getting the little uh, fire things put on the ground there, which is something that he does at the very end fight. Um, you, you have like the different mechanics with. Uh... Oh shoot, I'm trying to remember some of the other dungeons right now. Um... Right. The tower has the little rifts that show up that you can yeah. close. Person gets the eye, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Everything seems to like generate to be this is the final three fights here based on the stuff that we have going on inside these fights. And like it just kind of flows with it. I mean, 
It's like, do you figure out the bosses first, or do you kind of figure out, okay, here's the dungeon here, but now the boss has to have this type of mechanic to it type of deal? Or is it like it's, just one type of full thing on that? It's kind of a, a little bit organic in that we have different designers working on different aspects of the dungeon. So we have designers that are working on uh, the base pop and the mini bosses and stuff, and we have designers that are working on the bosses and stuff like that. But whenever possible, the designers that are working on the base pop and, and stuff like that and the designers that are working on bosses, we go, we, we, we talk all the time, so it's, it's, a, it's a thing where we go in and we say, hey, what are some of the boss mechanics that we can use that we can telegraph earlier in the dungeon? So it's pretty much driven by what we think the bosses are going to do, and then how we can fit that in into previous in dungeons, so that when you go to a boss, you know, it's like, here's 30 mechanics that you don't know anything about, uh, you know, so it's more along the lines of like, hey, here's six new mechanics and here's three other ones that maybe you saw previously in a dungeon or here's something like this and you see this and you go when you see it later you go oh i know how to defeat that so that to the previous question we don't have to send an action combat text or something like that so that so that you know oh okay this is what i'm supposed to do you've already seen it so you kind of already have gotten it uh kind of down so that's definitely something we, we try to do and I'm, I'm glad you guys picked up on it is we definitely it's try to telegraph a lot yeah. of the ball yeah. It's really cool. I think the most iconic one recently is Weichel Tower yeah. with the, we Port call it Portal Vision. Yeah. And uh, and so I think that, that was really nicely done and how that moved yeah. to the planar inhibitor fight. We're really proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> you should be. <laughs> um, so, oh, go ahead. Here I, I figured that you'd get the next one. Um, so, kind of with that, for your inspiration, like, for me, I think so far in my, in my playtest of the new trial, the, uh, the plane that you go through to find all those hidden, uh, hidden enemies were, is really fun. Yeah. And so where do you get your inspiration from, like, specific mechanics and dungeons? Do you, like, go home and think about it? Or, you know, how do you come up with those with your team? Uh, it's it's the benefit of, of really having a pretty uh, diverse team with uh, diverse backgrounds as far as gameplay and what they like to play and and, and stuff and um, we we kind of sit around in a room when we're when we're developing the the idea behind it and we put together several different pitches and then we go and talk to the higher ups and say these are the different things we want to do and then it's really great to be in that collaborative environment because one person can say oh I want to do this and then somebody else can just hack on and go oh if we do this then I can do this and stuff like that and then it's, it's pretty much um, we have a, a, a pretty good process for uh, concepting all this stuff we have a concept and prototype phase where, where people will go and they'll just shoot the moon and they'll say you know what I want to do this I'll write this giant doc and we'll go wow that's crazy that's really good let's see how much of this we can do and then uh, and then we boil it down to the elements of like, because we're designers, but not everything we say is going to work. So sometimes we'll boil it down and we'll say, okay, well, this one isn't selling. So let's see what happens, what this fight looks like when it removes that. So it, it really comes to the designers on the team that, that'll they'll just pitch these really, really awesome ideas. And then we'll say, hey, you know what, let's see if we can do that. And uh, that's kind of where the dark from behind the world came from. Uh, <laughs> I know. It's, I mean, I was ho hopefully expecting, you know, no, I play a lot of, you know, Texas Hold'em, and, I, you know, I had this idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when that river card came up, I was like, I got it! <laughs> no, uh, yeah, we play, we play tons of games, so it's, uh, um, and, and like, I, I think I said somebody else, that, you know, that's, we play games probably a little bit different than anybody else does, just because <laughs> having a design background is, like, I'll take a look at a game we're playing and go in, you know, something that goes well, and I think it was fun, and then I break it down design element-wise and say, okay, well, how did this, you know, how did they do this, and why was this rewarding, and stuff like that. So, we all kind of have that mindset. Mm -hmm. yeah, if, if you're taking pitches, one thing I would love to see, because I kind of liked it in the way that you handled it with some of the other ones, yeah. is I like more moving bosses. Meaning, I, I really just like stack and whack, because it's like the laziest way to do a dungeon certain times. I would love to see a dungeon where you, you, I, I realize that most dungeons are like you fight a boss, you're going into an arena type of area, and you're trying to fight inside that space. But yeah. like something I kind of liked with the, um, another Bethesda game would have been um, the Evil Within. Yeah. And if you remember the keeper on that, you had the yeah. keeper there that would like 
Like, he would follow you around from area to area as you fought him, and then you fight him in one room, and then defeat him, then you have to go into another room and defeat him again, and all this other stuff there. And you have it with some of the fights there, but I would just love to see that in more dungeon-type fights here, because, like, anything that kind of discourages that stack and whack, I'm, right. I know it's a mechanic for certain fights there, but it becomes so monotonous in other fights. And that's what I think in, in the new trial we tried to... Um, because that was a yes, yes. problem strategy in Hellrun AA was just everybody stack up and AOE everything down. And uh, it was definitely a focus for Maul of Lorcage to, to get to kind of break that mold and break that paradigm. So we have a lot of abilities where um, you know, it's just not beneficial for you to stack up and, and AOE yeah. stuff. So. I, I, so far, what I have played of it, I really, really like it. I really, really... I can't wait. I'm purposely going to run a group of 12 level 10s. That's the goal. <laughs> 12 level 10s! We're going to do it! <laughs> uh, that should be fun. That should be a lot of fun. I would love to see that. <laughs> um, just to cover some of the ones we covered before but when we had the whole mechs up there. Yeah. Um, how much did the dungeon team work with the abilities team for changes, i.e., uh, when we were looking at things with the stamina uh, regeneration being removed from uh, blocking, or, you know, when you raise the level to V16, etc. Uh, our teams work pretty pretty well hand-in-hand. Hand. Uh, we intermingle in meetings. Uh, we're in their morning meeting. Uh, whenever we have playtests, we invite them, so they can come up and see kind of what we're doing. Um, we have an idea of their roadmap for what the changes that they want to make. Um, and then we are pl we plan against it. We say, okay, well, this might be a potentially big impact, so let's 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 get some real tech behind it. Let's when we were doing the uh, Maul of Lorcash testing, because um, uh, to, we had a, we had a group of, of twelve players that were that were sitting there, and they would uh, the gameplay team in particular definitely came down and was like, "Hey, we made some changes to this. Let's see what this looks like in the trial group and stuff like that." So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're 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 definitely uh, intermixed as far as uh, working together. Um, Chris, you want to ask about cheese methods? <laughs> oh, go, gotcha, go back. Um, so, for cheese methods for dungeon fights, in many situations, um, we've included, you know, Mola Kenna last fight with Templar Shards, um, the stand and whack, which I think is my new phrase that I, I've never heard it that way before, <laughs> for the second boss in Vet ICP, uh, yep. standing in the corner for Banish Cells, uh, you know, standing on the bridge for Vet Fungal Grotto. Mm -hmm. All these types of things are examples of some Which, cheese methods players use to get through dungeons. Just, um, to mention, just to mention as well, most of these have been fixed at this point, but they were in at some point and they stayed around for a while as well. Um, do you prefer that players don't use these methods? I think we would prefer that they don't, but it's not something that we would overly... Uh, punish for or anything like that. It would be more along the lines of uh, uh, we would we would uh, add mechanics that would discourage that kind of behavior. Um, but sometimes it's like it's just a creative use of abilities and players put together several abilities uh, in a combination that maybe we, we thought of like, oh, we didn't think of that. But we don't want to just like, okay, we no longer can use standards or no longer can you use this or anything like that. We don't want to take away those kind of abilities. So we would just take a look at that. That was a very creative use, so we'll leave some of that stuff in. Uh, but for the most part, we, we try to uh, design around it if we see that kind of thing and say, okay, let's 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 discourage this type of stuff. Yeah, I think the only one of those methods listed um, is the stack and burn for vet ICP that's left of those that has not been uh, you know approached and fixed. Well, there's exactly. others there, but I wasn't sure of the response, so I didn't want to give out <laughs> to fix. <laughs> That's for the uh, Colossus, right? Flesh Colossus. Red ICP. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, instead of like actually bothering with anything, they just have high DPS. Right. St stack and burn. And it, it, it's it's not so much of a cheese method, really, because you still have to have the equipment to do it. But And the skill. Yeah. There's yeah. skill involved. Yeah, there is a skill involved. But like instead of like instead instead of like paying attention to the mechanics of the fight, instead they just simply use this other method there and make their own mechanics, I guess you could say. Yeah, we would, we would try to design uh, discouraging methods there. <laughs> All right, and uh, one of the other ones here. Uh, what's the most fun fight you've designed so far? And also, what's the most difficult fight that you've had to design? Um, 
So I know that the twins in Mall of Lord College was a lot of fun uh, to implement. Uh, actually, probably pretty much all three of the major boss fights in Mall of Lord College were really, really cool. Uh, Zajasa was great because we had started to develop a prototype for the pillar thing, to the hide behind and explode kind of thing, and it just never came to fruition in any previous content. So then our designer was like, I can use that and I can make it work. So then we, uh, we, he got together and he, he was able to, 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 to get this together and prototype it. And then we were able to like, it, it all worked and we were like, that's great. And then we, we ran with it from there. Um, boss three in, in Marvel or Kaj has a ton of moving parts. So that one's a, uh, that was a lot of fun because, um, mm -hmm. for both, for both developing it and watching players go, okay, what's going to happen in this phase? Okay, what's going to happen in this phase? phase? Um, as far as difficult encounters, uh, the Flesh Sculptor in particular was tough because of all the moving parts that, that you have going into that with the guys running in, and then sometimes they would be slowed, and sometimes they would be... So we had a lot of like edge cases that uh, we still needed to work through there. Um, we actually made some changes to it in, in Thieves Guild that should make it a bit easier, um, but uh, yeah, that one was probably one of the one of the difficult ones we had, just because of all the edge cases. Pretty much anything that comes about with tons of edge cases that that would uh, throw wrenches into the plan and stuff like that. We uh, because we'll find them weeks later and go, ah, didn't think of that. <laughs> all right. Um, and what was the most difficult one? Like, what was the one that you were like, how can we get this to be harder? Or, like, you kind of like a, a tough time trying to figure out the mechanics of, like, how do we get this to work properly with everything else? Uh, you know, what's funny is, is, is uh, Rakat, uh, the, the final boss of Mob Lurkaj, is probably, while it's the most fun, uh, those moving parts are like, that's tough to balance for. That's really, really tough to balance for. So, mm -hmm. there's a lot of taking a look at all the different ways that incoming damage happens and all the different ways like oh well this this didn't quite work right or something like that so um, those in particular those and those issues in particular are, are uh, would, would probably push that one up there to be one of the most difficult I mean we've done so many boss fights it's really tough to pick one it's like oh this was definitely the most difficult mm -hmm. uh, weirdly like Bogdan in uh, Elden Hollow was a, was a fairly difficult fight because of some of the edge cases that happened um, yeah. The, uh, and some of them are not necessarily difficult mechanically, but difficult because of uh, uh, just the, how we have to implement it and stuff like that. So it would just be like, it would be totally like you guys were like, what? I don't understand why that would be difficult. But like, yeah, it was just a pain in the butt to get this to work right. So. <laughs> All right. Honestly, the one mechanic that I feel like was so difficult to program, which I think is so interesting, is the ghost panthers that summon when you die yeah <laughs> in the new trial i'm like holy cow i mean so if you don't die then there's less incoming damage so it's better off to try not to you know yeah. it's best yeah. if you don't die but i like that in that mechanic but i think that's an interesting variable of based on x number of deaths you have y number of yep panthers, know, up. panthers yep. come in yep. It took a while for people to realize that too when we did the trial. Yeah, it's like, like, where are they all coming from? And what's funny is, is we saw it 100% on streams. Like we see, yeah. we saw somebody die. It was like, oh, that guy died. Here comes the Panthers. And then yeah. <laughs> out of, right out of, people were like, where are all these Panthers coming from? And we're sitting there around the screen, and like, is somebody dead over there? You gotta go. Just, hold just <laughs> laughing at their pain. Was that difficult to program though? Um. Data wise, well, yeah. Uh, anytime you're you're kind of interacting with with dead uh, is is uh, can be tricky. Um, but it more of the complexity with that is timing on that one is to to say, okay, we don't want to overload people with too much stuff happening all at once, and then getting the timing of, okay, are we going to give them X amount of time to res a player, and how long is that going to take, and stuff like that. So that was, the difficulty in that one will come more in, in line with timing, and then making sure that the damage, mm -hmm. um, and, and the difficulty of the fight doesn't spike way too high when you have... Wait, um, can you avoid them? Can you res fast enough to avoid them? Well, you could, th they keep on spawning, so you could, like, res somebody up instead of, like, letting them die. And, like, I remember one time we did it, and they, no one was resing anyone because they were just trying to burn the boss. And they right. just kept on spawning over and over and over. 
So you're guaranteed at least one. Well, if somebody dies, yes. Well, you yes! Don't die. <laughs> okay. Sorry, a little bit of confusion there. Uh. Um, a bonus question. We didn't really cover this, but I kind of added at the end there. Um, how did the developers view the roles? Because we, we had a little talk on the forums there about, like, what the role of tanks are and how they feel about that. Like, how do you view, like, the trinity of this right now? Uh, in what regard? Like, you know, what do you think the role of the tank is versus, like, the role of the healer versus the DPS? Um, like, it, it's, it, it's not, it's not like, um, in other games right there, like, you take a look at, like, um, like, wow or something like that it's like they have to they have to taunt everything in the room they have to keep everything off um everyone else and they have to have high mitigation and they don't do damage take a look at guild wars 2 it's a little bit more active dps role um they say they don't have the trinity but they really do kind of have the trinity inside of that uh warhammer online you had tanks who could still do damage and a few other things as well with it uh so how, how do you view like where where tanks, where DPS, where healers need to be? Like, um... I, I think that the goal for um, since we've actually started the game, the goal in particular in dungeons for we we'll use tanks as an example is not for tanks to go in and kind of grab everything. Uh, the goal for them is very much to say what's the thing that's going to hurt the most. I can grab that. And DPS and, and healers, um, you DPS down the monsters that, that uh, you can and you just make sure that uh, uh, you could survive through it. And they those monsters don't damage players enough that a DPS can't um, take them out or something like that, especially if you focus on fire and stuff like that. So that's very much the, the role that I think that we've been trying to reinforce throughout um, when you get into trials, it's a little bit different because uh, this trial very much, Mall of Lord Cards very much has a, uh, a dual tanking situation where you're going to want two tanks most of the time because uh, tanks will be able to, to, to take some of the stuff, but regular but players that aren't necessarily have the mitigation of tanks won't be able to handle some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's more of a hard pass. But a lot of the other dungeons, and even in normal versions of, of other dungeons, where You've had tanks that I've seen, uh, you know, dual spec tank healers and then three DPS and they're able to do stuff. And I think that we're 100% fine with that. I mean, that's, that's it. If you're going to, uh, you know, spec in that role and say, I can effectively heal and tank in this particular case, that's great. I think that as we get higher and more challenging content, that kind of role will fall off a little bit in that I can't split my stuff. But... For the most part, it, it going through, uh, yeah, some of the normal content stuff like that, I think that however you want to do it is is, is great with us. So, so to re reiterate, uh, reiterate <laughs> on that a little bit, because um, I mean, my two max level characters that I use regularly are one's a healer and one's a tank. Mm -hmm. um, and in some situations, based on the pledge of the day, um, especially for the tank, um, I find that it is sometimes difficult to form groups because they're like, oh, we don't need a tank for that. Yeah, sometimes. Um, you know, it's because because a lot of the content was made before, you know, the max level at the beginning of the game for launch was V10. Now it's V16. We didn't have the champion system. Now we do. So some some content, um, most noticeably, is uh, you know, Dragon Star. Right. But some people are like, we don't need a tank for this. We don't we don't need you. But you're like, well, I still need to get the pledge done on my tank for the yeah, day. Right. Um, is that kind of something that is getting looked at? Or uh, is something you guys are currently okay with until harder content comes? Um, I mean, this is a yeah, spinoff, so yeah, I apologize. I definitely want to uh, uh, encourage people to play kind of how they want. We don't really discourage, um, I guess, the 3 DPS type thing. We could take a look... Um, I'm loath to, to say that we can definitely take a look at some of that stuff, but I mean, uh, going forward with content, I think it would be something we definitely want to take a look at to make sure that whatever given role that players have, they have an effective means to do the content. So uh, we don't want to make content essentially that's like, okay, well, this is the four DPS dungeon or something like that. You know, yes. and it's like, hey, we're all four DPS dungeons. Like that. We want to make content that's going to engage players no matter what role that they have. So. Mm -hmm. I appreciate um, that. Yeah. 
Uh, do you want to ask the last one there on the list? The addition of, uh, what is it, the scalability? Yeah, so, um, especially with the new, the new trial, one cool feature that is happening quite a lot um, is that endgame content, especially PvE, will scale to group leader. Um, will all leaderboard standings only occur if particip participations at um, highest V6 di difficulty, and can we expect all new dungeons, raids, arenas to start scaling in the future? So for that, uh, player engagement is pretty much the uh, driving factor for that. Um, we want to engage as many players as possible in the content. In other words, we don't want to just make trials for a small subset of people or something. That's why that's where normal mode comes out and sort of stuff. So we still, it, as it isn't live yet, we still have a lot of data to sift through, especially when this goes live. But it is, we think that scaling will achieve that goal. Um, so it's something that we would probably continue in the future. Uh, and as far as uh, Leaderboards. Leaderboards are a bit of a unique snowflake. Um, and it's a measuring <laughs> for players that can that that are really super interested in progression to compare themselves. So it's a delicate balancing act if we're able to allow it to include scaling content. So I'm not sure that's the direction where we're going to go with uh, leaderboards um, because of the nature behind where we where we envision leaderboards to go. But we'll definitely take a look at it. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, question on that. There, have, have you ever considered uh, putting in something like a leaderboard brackets? Because right now the leaderboards are limited to like, of course, like high level. But um, it's some. It's an idea that's been floated, but we haven't put any time against it to see the the uh, reality of how it would how it would come about. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that once we get some data from uh, uh, live. Particularly with, because uh, we'd even floated the idea at one point of a normal and a veteran leaderboard. Uh, leaderboards also have uh, a uh, kind of a stigma involved with them, where it's if people go into it and they say, "Well, this is leaderboard graded," and and you know what yeah. I mean. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, that might actually that has the double edged sword of sometimes turning players off. They're like, "Well, I don't want to be graded," you know, on this. So uh, we, we will we'll balance that out. Basically, we have, we'll take a look at at the data we get and how many players are playing this uh, and. Uh, what kind of engagement we get from people, and then uh, go from there. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking more like between like you know ten to four or ten to twenty, um, right. thirty to forty, right. etc. Because now you have the option to where you previously, of course, uh, didn't have it, but eh, now we have it. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully, my maelstrom arenas are not being recorded because <laughs> <laughs> I am not doing well at all with no sound. No, I never realized how much I actually rely on the sounds that you guys give from the tells in this <laughs> until you actually don't use it. Yeah. So uh, a few questions in chat. I don't know if you actually want to, if you're able to talk any of these. Um, repair vendors in dungeons? I mean, typically you don't, that's what like um, like the repair kits are for most times. So I, I wouldn't see it being added anytime soon unless it was a crown store feature maybe. I don't know. We don't have any, any right now, and actually there is a, uh, in Thieves Guild, I believe, that you get some portable vendors and stuff like that as rewards and, and stuff like that. The merchant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, but the merchant, the merchant doesn't repair, though. Oh. You can only sell to the well, merchant. Yeah, yeah currently, currently with Thieves Guild, I'm not sure if it's intended, but my add-on says that I'm paying for repairs, but I never actually get the pairs from the assistant in the merchant, so it's still up for grabs whether or not they will repair. Um, we'll take a look at that, but yeah, I don't, if there's nothing on the plan right now for, uh, for adding, uh, merchants, uh, repair merchants in dungeons, but the spec is, is good, and we, we can take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Um, are infinite available, no one wants to tank like unicorns, heavy armor is no longer good. That's, that's more of an, that's more of a, heavy armor is more of a horrible question, I think, at this point, right? He's, yeah. he's Possibly. the one who's, who's, uh, handling most of that. So, yeah. so is there anything else you want to tease or give out or like inset something that's uh, on the horizon for Dark Brotherhood or such? Uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> if you can. Right. You gotta try. Uh, yeah, 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 you gotta try. Uh, I, I have uh, nothing at the moment. Okay. Okay. All right. But appreciate well, it. Yeah, if we yep. took a lot of your time. I apologize for this going late, but. Uh, yeah, uh, my art has to be. <laughs> 
this room. So. <laughs> all right. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, especially with all the technical issues and all that stuff. Um, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> Apologize, we don't have much time for uh, any of your questions. Unfortunately, we're taking an hour of your time out of work, an hour out of my time from watching my child who's singing in the background, an hour out of Kraz's time. So we just kind of planned this and to see <laughs> what we could. And we're going to attack this on with the entire thing with the Thieves Guild going over the area, looking at it, looking how pretty it is and all that stuff, as well as some of the new features included, uh, like the Maelstrom Arena saving mode, which is something I am very happy with. So no longer do I have to worry about going in this place and like losing my progress if I have to go do something. Um, Dungeon Finder, which is going to be a nice new feature, and of course the new Lock of Mollerjai, or Ma of... whatever. Crazy, you take that one. I can't forget his face. I'm still avoiding it on camera when Finn's watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, and we're going to have a new trial as well, which is going to be nice. And actually, it's also now included... Maybe I should ask that one. Um, the decision to make it cross-faction, um, that was in the plans for a while there, wasn't it? And it was just yeah, something that we... For a while. It just okay. We weren't sure if we were going to be able to get it in for these guild, but we were. Okay. So, so that dungeons means... and trials are officially cross-faction? Yeah. Okay, and that's that also covers Maelstrom Arena. Um, and Dragon. And Dragon Star... Or actually, why would Maelstrom be cross faction? What can I? Maelstrom Arena, you can do that at any faction. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Dragon Star Arena is what I was thinking of uh, in particular on that. So, all right, guys. Thank you very much for your time, Finn. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Kraz. Thank you for everyone who's watched here today. Uh, I'll get this up into YouTube eventually here, uh, edited with some of their Thieves Guild stuff and some hopefully annotations on what questions they're asking and in case people can understand what we're mumbling. Um, and thank you everyone for your time. Meantime. Bye. 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 -bye. <laughs>